in this session of Look at the Book, we're going to narrow our concern to one matter in 1 Peter 5, 7 to 9, because we'll be back to it, because there's lots of detail here that we're not going to deal with in this session. In this session, I want to um, discover with you the answer to the question, does God's care for us make us careless or careful? In other words, if God fights for us, do we need to fight? Does God's protection of us make us passive, or does it make us mighty warriors? And the, the, the method that we're going to focus on is simply to notice that when two verses or two sentences or two clauses flow from one to the other, and there's no connector phrase, like right here, there's no because, there's no in order that, there's no and, there's no although, there's no so that. It just starts a new phrase. We shouldn't just draw a line there, memorize this verse as precious, then memorize this verse as precious, and not notice the connection, because this connection here answers, answers the question. So, Father, I pray that the biblical logic that flows between your carrying our anxieties and our being careful and not careless would be plain and powerful for all of us as we see it in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me read this, 1 Peter 5, 7 and 9. Casting all your anxieties on him, God, because he cares for you. It's one of the sweetest sentences in the Bible. He cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. So sober, watchful, resistance. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the whole world. So we got lots more to say about that. All I want to do in this session is take serious note. Let, let the connection here really have its impact. So the, the precious teaching of verse 7, we, we deal with our anxieties, and they are real because there's a real roaring lion. He really devours people. Christians are really in danger, or uh, Peter wouldn't tell us to be sober and watchful and, and resist if there were no danger. There's real danger here because we might think we're believers and we're not believers if we don't take up arms against this devil. So there is a real danger, therefore there are real anxieties, so we've got to deal with them in the right way, and that's by letting God care for us, which now raises the question for lots of people, oh, God's going to care for me. I don't need to worry about this roaring lion. I've got an almighty God who cares for me. What's the point of my being sober? What's the point of my being watchful? What's the point of my resisting? I've got a God who cares for me. And he's stronger than the devil. And so I don't need to be watchful and sober-minded and resisting. You, you can hear you can hear that kind of logic, and people do that. They pick and choose, and they draw out their own uh, fancies about what it implies that God cares for us and our anxieties are on Him, and they pay no attention to reality. And the reality is, this connection right here is massively important. Whatever word you would put there, the reality is. When our anxieties go unto him and we are freed from anxiety because he cares for us, the result is not careless Christians. The result is sober-minded, watchful Christians. When God says, I will protect you, don't worry, don't worry, don't have anxieties, I'll protect you, the result is not no warfare. The result is fight. 
and fight to win. You don't fight out of anxiety. You fight out of watchfulness. When you're watchful, you don't have to be anxious. When you're so reminded, you don't have to be anxious, but you do have to fight. And so that's the point. The point of this session is that the logic of this connection right here, anxieties go on to God. God takes our anxieties. He exerts his mighty care on our behalf. And the result is not careless Christians, but careful Christians, not passive Christians, but powerful Christians. We become so reminded, we become watchful, and we become resistors and fighters. And then what I do when I discover something like that, and I want to preach on it, or I want to share it with my family, or I want to put it in a devotion, or I just want to meditate it for my soul, meditate on it for my soul. I look for it elsewhere. And here, look at this in, in 1 Peter 4.10, as each has received a gift from God, a wonderful, powerful, glorious, people-helping gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. We are stewards of grace. Grace doesn't make us passive. It makes us stewards. Whoever speaks, yes, you don't shut up because God has given you a gift. You open your mouth because God has given you a gift. As one who speaks, speaking the oracles of God, as one who serves, serving in the strength that God supplies. If God supplies strength, what do we do? We serve. We don't go to bed. God fighting for us, God giving us strength makes us active, not passive. Same thing in Philippians 2.12. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling for God is the one who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So many people go exactly the opposite. They say, well, if God is, is working the will and working for his good pleasure in us, then we don't have to work out our salvation. And the people that turn passive like that and say, you don't need to fight the devil and just lay down and let him put his jaws on your brain or on your heart, those are people who are showing they don't have God working in them. They're fake Christians. We can see it again in 1 Corinthians 5.10. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. You want to know whether you have the grace of God in you? Does it produce warfare against sin? Does it produce loving other people? Or Ephesians 6.10, where it talks about the devil himself. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Do you see that? It's not, you have to choose between being strong or letting the Lord be your strength. No. <laughs> in the Lord, he makes us strong. Why? <laughs> so that, let's read it, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That standing right there against the schemes of the devil is the same. Back here in chapter 5 of 1 Peter, it's the same as resist him. All your anxieties have gone on to God. He's now caring for you. He's fighting for you. He's strong for you. But that doesn't make you care less. It doesn't make you passive. It makes you mighty to fight, mighty to resist the devil. The Christian life is a life of sober-mindedness, watchfulness, and warfare against the evil one. So, Here's the point, right there. Do you stop right here and draw out your own fanciful implications about God carrying your anxieties and say, oh, well, we can just eat, drink, and be merry because life is que sera, sera, and God's in charge, and I don't need to do anything. Or do you let the Bible, do you let God tell you what it means for the fact that he cares for you, fights for you, wars for you, and namely makes you sober-minded, 
watchful, and therefore effective in resisting the devil. Lots more to say about this, but there is a huge issue that we all need to take note of.